Hi everybody, welcome back to the Tetrix RoboBench video series. This is Tim, and today I wanna to talk to you about servos. Specifically, I wanna to talk to you about servos with the Tetrix Max elements and sets. Uh, one of the things that people have always struggled with a little bit is being able to mount servos successfully on the Tetrix Max elements. Servos can be incredibly useful and functional, but in order to take full advantage of all the features and functionality that servos bring to the table, you have to be able to mount them correctly. So that's what I wanna to talk to you about today. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover some of the servos that are coming in the new sets, some of the ones we originally um, produced, and hopefully show some of the features that maybe you're not familiar with that will help you when you try and use servos on your robots. Are you ready? Let's start by kind of covering the two different types of mounts that we have because basically we've, we've kind of broken them up into two different types. We have the servo mounts that are meant to go on top of or outside of a channel, uh, this being a channel element, similar to this one right here where the servo is mounted on one side and it either has a arm or lever attached directly to the servo or interfaces with another gear. Now, there are advantages to that in the fact that um, you, you're able to remove the servo a little bit or interface with the gear, but there's also disadvantages. This was the first type of, of mount that we actually made, and I'm gonna show you a little bit closer view of that. That's this one right here. Um, this was for a single servo. The servo would actually go into the mount just like this from the outside. Now, um, one of the disadvantages of that and where people sometimes had problems is if I mount that on the outside of a channel, just like this, um, and I mount the an arm on the bracket or the servo right here, if it's just hanging out here like this, there's a lot of potential side load on that servo, which can cause failure and actually it doesn't really take full advantage of the servo because it's got side load it has to contend with in, in addition to rotational torque or mode. So it's, it's not as efficient, um, but sometimes it's necessary. Now, one of the things that you some people make mistakes about is that because of the mounting, it's important there's two different mounting points. And what I have already attached on this is a threaded spacer just like this, and there's a threaded spacer that comes with each one of these brackets. Now, I've got two different potential mounting points on one side, and if I mount the, the threaded spacer on the wrong hole versus the way I have my servo, it's not gonna align correctly. So, for instance, if I mount my servo just like this, you can see that the servo output shaft is directly above where my mounting point is. Now that will make my alignment correct when I actually put it on uh, my channel with the gear, similar to what I have right here. If you, oh, I'm gonna turn this around so you can see the back side. Um, you see the gear are in line and with the 16 millimeter spacer, I have the correct spacing so that my gears mesh correctly. So that's one thing to remember. If I mount that in the opposite direction, which is a mistake people often make. If I turn this servo just like this, um, my gear alignment is not going to be correct. So that's one thing to keep in mind. If I want my alignment correct, I could move this threaded spacer over here and then I would have the correct alignment. So that's very important to remember uh, on this original type of bracket. The second type of bracket is basically a dual bracket of the first. This is the, the other bracket that we released originally. And again, I could put two servos just like this in the bracket and they could actually be joined together so that they could work cooperatively and I would add double the power through the servos and I just connect them to a single output and they're controlled the same. So this can be a functional bracket that's very useful, but I have the same hole patterns on this as I did my original. So I would want to make sure that again, I have the, the same alignment as I, where I mount the spacer 
in the same alignment where I have the output shaft of my servo. My output shaft is down here, I want my spacer down here. My output shaft is up here, I want my spacer up here. So that's important to remember in your spacing on this particular bracket. Another example of an uh, outside bracket is this one. Now, we actually created this bracket as kind of a um, heavier duty bracket that would support the servo on both sides. I'm going to thread my wire through here just like that. And as I put that uh, through my it's being uncooperative here, there we go. Just like that, you can see that I've got a bracket that really encloses that servo on both sides. And again, I have the same th uh, spacing options with my th threaded spacer so that I keep my gear alignment. And the advantage of this is that this particular bracket is going to help reduce flex of the servo. I'm going to go back to my original example here. As this gear is under load, it's going to tend to spread those gears apart, um, which could cause slippage or could cause damage to the gears or the servo. This bracket is going to help reduce that because I'm supporting the, the servo in a bracket that's encased. It's a very strong bracket. I could even put another spacer here, really beef this up so that's a very secure way of mounting that servo on the outside of a piece of channel. The next bracket that I want to show you, and it's kind of the last one in this, these brackets that are on the outside, is this adjustable bracket. And you can see that, again, the servo is going to mount on the outside. And I have, this time, a hole pattern that is adjustable. So if I mount this on the outside of a channel, I really have the latitude of being able to slide that up and down the channel to make sure that my gear has the proper meshing if I'm um, just off just a little bit in the need for where my servo needs to actually be. So this can be a very useful type of bracket. So those are the four that are meant to mount on the outside of the channel. Now I want to talk about the two that have been released since then that um, help address some issues with servos that um, the servo is actually meant to mount so the channel, so that the drive or output, output shaft of the servo goes through the channel. So let's start with what we call a front mount servo. Now you can see that I have, in this particular mount, I have standoffs mounted. These are 32 millimeter standoffs. I could vary the length on how this uh, far this sets away from the channel by just changing the standoffs. But uh, for this one, I went ahead and put 32s. Now, what happens is the servo this time is going to go from this side, just like that. And a servo horn then, just like this one, would actually just interface just like that. And it would allow me to, the output shaft of the servo coming through then a channel when I mount it just like this. My standoffs are going to hold the servo away from the channel, but my axle is going to be actually supported on two sides by the channel. This reduces any side load on the servo at all. So this becomes a very efficient way of using the servo in that it reduces any and all side load. So this is actually one of the better ways uh, to really get the most out of your servo is if you can support the axle or output shaft through a piece of channel. So I hope that kind of makes sense. And again, I can vary the distance that this servo is away from the channel by just changing the height of the standoffs. I can move that closer, uh, hold that so that you can see it. It's a much shorter standoff. It would fit the same way and hold that piece away. So that's a front mount servo, a bracket. Again, the servo is designed to go through that and attach directly to um, the channel from the front. And the last piece of uh, bracket that I want to show you is the newest one that we have. And we actually have this mounted in a kit, but uh, this one is similar to the front mount in that servo mounts just like this. And we have the Tetrix hole pattern that matches up and allows us to mount 
either directly to a channel like this or use standoffs and hold it out away. And I can mount it in several ways. So for instance, if I, I actually have a specialty um, servo horn that comes with the, the brackets kit, I can uh, press that on. And if I use the 32 millimeter standoffs, it'll be just the right distance so that that bracket will set right like that, actually, just like this, because my hole is going to be in alignment with the channel. And it's going to line up just like that. And then, again, support the axle through the channel as it goes through and give me the support I need. Let me see if I can get this lined up. So I can show you just like that. Uh, and give me the support through the channel. This becomes, again, a very versatile type of bracket so that I really reduce any side load of the servo and make sure that I'm taking full advantage of the uh, functionality of the servo and make sure it works correctly. So remember, build some robots, have fun, come back and see us.